their hitscan player is playing from Korea. Th this is just so much of a mismatch that is in favor of Nero. It's not impossible for energy, but it's gonna be very difficult. Let's see how Poise deals with Nero here early on. We do have some compositional differences between the two teams, but we are going to get that Widow versus Widow battle that you mentioned, ZP. We're going to have Stratus, of course, on the Sombra for the health pack control. We'll see. That's why Toronto is actually taking it onto the left-hand side on the inside while Nero's getting jumped on, but the rest of his team is there to try and jump onto Butcher. And this is the adaptation that energy has to do to a degree, right? You have to be putting pressure on Nero on all ends because you can't rely on just Poise. It's sort of the strategy aspect here where try and isolate, but Poise is under pressure in the back, now just looking for his way in. And on the other end, Stratus picked off a Winston, a Tracer, and a Prayer, and Toronto already starting to work their way onto this point. That was a crazy call out coming from Toronto. You can see Dalton was in the back line of the NRG Esports uh, lineup. He could have gone after the Zenyatta, he could have gone after Rob, but instead the call was made, go on to Stratus, he's on the point, they take out that Sombra, and from there they just clean up. Also, given what we saw from NRG last week, why would you do anything but focus Stratus right now? I, I, that is the game plan, yeah. Toronto can just shut that down. They have already started it off now. Sombra, usually, you know, by the first fight, you want to at least have about 50% towards that EMP, but he gets spotted out coming in with himself. Stratus not quite able to get the engagement he's looking for. Meanwhile, Rob kept Dove on, on the backside. Gave up his life for that pickup, though, so energy's still very much in this. However, they don't punish it. They let Axiom get back into it, so there's still a tank up for Toronto as they work around the point. Arrow got Fozix on the outskirts, but it's Smex using the Diva to max advantage. Got an early self-destruct, got Cruz picked off Dalton. Smex keeping energy in this fight. And Shu's gonna go ahead and use that transcendence to stall out the point even longer. It works out for them as Nero is able to take out Boys and with the Primal Rage, they swing things back in their favor due Toronto. And Nero is working on Contested right now. He's 2-0 to zero versus Boys in the setup. There was a little bit of pressure on him early on, but was anyone going for the Nero in that last fight? Didn't really seem like it. Yeah, they were just too busy dealing with the front line here, and that's what Toronto's doing. They're running the interference, right? Every time a dive comes out, you have Axiom and Guardian falling back to make sure that they're Contested right there at the front, not able to make any more progress into the back line. And meanwhile, you take a look at Toronto. They've already had one recon side up. Poise only at 62%. He has not had much success here so far. Energy as they come to this fight. They have the EMP up. Stratus gonna drop it immediately, and they try and focus out Guardian during this, but Guardian's still easily protected. But if they can, it'd be huge, because they got action on the other side. But Nero got Poise again mid-fight. No one's gonna be contesting Nero here. And they let Cruz get the res off again. And Toronto's still in a very good shape, EMP or no. Here we go, both teams just busy fighting on the point with Nero taking out uh, Poise earlier on. He's just able to stay free with that Widowmaker now. It's coming down to 99% as NRG Esports this is their final chance to try and contest the point. Now Poise is not enough for the Widowmaker, he's going to Tracer. It's a late swap to get back to the point, but NRG, they're down players here, so this is where you'd look to a Tracer to have that gigantic bow, and he got Cruz. That's the first step, still need more as Nero easily gets Stratus before he can get back to the point. Toronto gets a cleanup they need and they easily take the first round. And this is what we were expecting that you had mentioned, ZP, at the beginning. Nero versus Poise, it's gonna be Nero, and I believe he went up three to zero before the end of that round in the Widow Battles itself. But there was huge discrepancy in damage numbers because, you, as you had mentioned, Poise only got about maybe one and a half, two of the Infrasites up, while Nero almost had a 100% uptime rate with it. It was just a case where I just think there's a huge mechanical skill mismatch here, and it's putting energy in a rough position where they have to, on one hand, have Stratus play out of his mind to do well here, and then they have to take down a DPS early on or have something done to change the flow of the match, and that's difficult. Now, this is interesting. They're putting Stratus on the Widowmaker. I think this is very clearly tailored to try to deal with Nero early on. Yep, Nero. We'll be walking forward with that, well, floating forward with that far now. Poise on the Tracer. We saw on his debut performance for NRG. Oh, he kind of got picked first in a lot of these fights. It's Nero who's receiving the focus now from Stratus, but he will be healed back up. Here's what Nero can do here. You respect Stratus, you don't fight it straight up. You keep hiding in the back. At some point, energy has to get to the point, and if they're gonna do that here, it means that Poise is gonna have to outperform what we've seen from before, I don't know what's actually threatening Toronto here besides getting a pick off on the top as Dalton from the back just flanks in on Rob. Now you have the man advantage and Toronto, they're gonna go all in here. Nero's no longer in the back, in over the top, gets on Butcher and it's a clean dive in from Toronto. 
yeah, yeah, Guardian is just the sacrificial mech there. He gives his life for that dive. He allows everyone to focus him down while the rest of Toronto are just beating on everybody else that was in that corner. Looks like NRG Esports, they try to take it slow, but Toronto knew they just played line of sight until they were ready to dive upon an NRG squad that did not have that much mobility. And so far what we've been seeing is that Toronto's just been taking initiative. A big part of it has been Dalton, where he's consistently putting high pressure in the back line. Some of the energy is not getting here yet. Now, boys, going to be looking for Dalton in the beginning. Meanwhile, look at all the damage that you're seeing Arrow put out here. Just stalling NRG before they can even get back into the point. He's the ground mine. The pulse bomb goes in, but doesn't get Axiom. Axiom actually is able to get out of there. He's going to end up falling, but look at how far energy's had to overextend here. Nero's coming back in on the Farah, landing good rockets, Dalton on the outside, and they let Axiom get rezzed again. Yeah, Axiom continually getting that res, either his cruise or his shoot. They're able to get it off for free. Nero, even in their barrage down, makes his escape. And it's going to be Toronto holding on to the point here with NRG making these swaps. They did make their swap offs. Wholesale changes across the team composition, but it has not worked out for them. It's going to be difficult for them to even build up their ultimates right now. Stratus is only at 50% towards the EMP. Look, well, if you have to have an adjustment here for NRG, Stop letting Mercy res the tanks. You're actually getting decent early tank pickoffs here in the beginning, but you're not finishing your play. Meanwhile, diving on it, Butcher takes a pulse pop. Specs so was in the blast rays as well. Both gonna be healed up. NRG looking for a way in right now. Specs dives in super deep, looking for the D-Mech. Guardian still has his mech even in the melee here, able to back off. You gotta finish that off as Toronto right now is just simply playing for time. Nero on the flank got Fozix working with the man advantage now as Toronto as NRG just hunted down. They're gonna be down to their final fight, and I'm not even sure they get back in time. Yeah, Smex was trying to focus down the opposing Guardian there, but it was a great job coming out from Axiom. He had his primal rage. He was just blocking most of those critical damage wasn't allowing that to go across 99% now. No one's going to be able to make it out to the point. Toronto will walk away with the first map in this best of five series. And nothing here was surprising. This is, we came into this knowing that Toronto has a huge advantage with NRG's recent changes, and it went about as planned where, quite simply, NRG got out mechanically played at most levels, but yeah, it's just, this is what we expected. Yeah, you know, we saw a lot of kind of they were they were really I feel like the tank team uh, the tank duo over on NRG they had their hands full and they were playing as well as they could but when there was no like you were saying there was no follow through there wasn't anything they could do beyond that because they really weren't in a position to deal damage. Well, when they would swap off onto dive, um, we saw there on well that well they never had the initiative. They never actually went for a full out dive. What's the point of running a dive composition if you're not going to dive? And so that's the kind of problem they ran into where it was on the opposite end. Toronto they were able to make the decisions. They were able to jump on the target and take them down. Yeah, you know we saw tonight uh, so far we've seen some really incredible play from uh, Stratus, which we were expecting. But we actually had a chance to catch up with him earlier today and get his kind of thoughts on what was going on in playoffs, what was going on with teams, and what's going on in Overwatch. So let's take a look at that. This is Heroes Rising, presented to you by Old Spice. And lift, and lift, and lift. Firm those fingers. Old Spice Hand Gym. Get good, get gains. Please. Stratus, marker. My name is Ethan Yankel, and my in-game name is Stratus. And I play Flex DPS for NRG. Stratus, no one's really trying to contest him, but NRG Esports off of Stratus. Huge man advantage here. As a contenders player, like walking up and seeing uh, an Overwatch League stage has been absolutely insane. It's literally seeing everything I would want to achieve and everything I can achieve like in front of me. It's a motivation, but it's also like really surreal. I am from Western PA. I had a pretty normal childhood. Uh, I played a lot of video games, probably a little bit more than normal, but you know, having an older brother and a father who have a really strong work ethic has helped me a lot. Still Stratus doing damage from afar, and the job has been done. He had all the information to get that kill. At first, my family weren't completely understanding of like how serious you could go in esports. Great oh. shot from Stratus. But once they started seeing results from tournaments and like, you know, leaderboard stuff, they were really supportive, 100%. Stratus is making his way onto the point. Another barrage coming out from Stratus. My experience in competing with contenders has been really stressful, but it's also been the most amazing learning experience I've had thus far. Like, I came from Overwatch Open and just, like, playing on my own competitively. So being in this environment where I have really high-level coaches and players to play with, it's been crazy. And the DPS duo from NRG doing its duty here. 
I think my playstyle is heavily dependent on the hero that I play. When I play Pharah, I play really aggressive. Like, I try to take 1v1s with the other Pharah, like, as much as I possibly can. Stratus leads the way. The sky is the limit here. Genji, it's a little different. You have to be very flexible in the way you play Genji. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be unpredictable as much as I can on that hero because that is what you get the most value out of on Genji especially, is being unpredictable coming from different angles and stuff like that. And there's the hammer! Stratus fins his way in! It's a 4 the 5 for Stratus! I think the thing that makes me pursue Overwatch the most is probably how much there is to improve in the game. You have Stratus go in, dives in with the blade, looking for the second, gonna get it. There's so many aspects to the game. It's a FPS MOBA hybrid, so you have to have a, like a really strong game sense, but also really strong mechanics. So you're constantly improving, but you're also constantly keeping a balance. And I think that's what makes it the most fun for me. Energy Esports on the way. Could be a victory here. Stratus goes wild. When I finally make it on to the Overwatch League and finally walk up to the stage in my own competitive match, I think it'll be really surreal once I have time to reflect on it, but it'll be difficult to kind of process it when it's happening. And you know, the craziest part is like, he's only 16. Yeah. yeah. We have two <laughs> more years before he's pro league and it's just, it blows my mind. And he's already got so much confidence too. You yeah. heard that video, when I make it to the Overwatch League. That's the kind of language I like to hear. Yes, so boo, Stratus, yes. You know we're all rooting for you here. Yeah, absolutely. You know I hear the waffling, it's like, no. well, if I make it to, it's like, no, 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 when I make yes. it to Overwatch League. And hey, he's had a great run in contenders here so far. So it's exciting to see that level of confidence come out. All righty, let's go ahead and check out where we're heading next on this playoffs journey. We are going to Numbani. Okay, so new money coming out, and that is going to be NRG's pick here. It's going to be interesting because a lot of teams do rely upon a Tracer, especially on point A. Right now, we're not seeing that Tracer play coming out, uh, working out in their favor. Stratus or Poise could play it, but I feel like they're more than likely going to put Poise on that and allow Stratus to maybe go for a Farah here on point A attack. I mean, the other thing they can do, this is one map, at least in the beginning, where you can do things like run a 76 as opposed mm -hmm. to a Tracer, but uh, overall, it just seems like Poise has been a rough spot, and if nothing else, they are perhaps on Western servers now, so Poise will have a little bit of an easier time. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but NRG, overall, this was a Dark Horse team that was performing really well, and they're still just trying to adapt to the recent change. Is there anything, and this might, I don't mean for this to sound bad, but is there anything they can kind of do to mitigate the damage that Poise is doing to NRG right now? Like the weakness that he's bringing? And, and it, I think it has to do, like you were saying, like he's the only player in freaking Korea right now. Like that sucks. I mean, the most I can think of is, you know, try and put him in situations where right now you do see the other team keying in on him early, just try and pounce on them when they go for him early on. It's not a great situation. Oh, you're I mean, going to bait with him. Oh, poor guy. Yes. Oh, uh, no. it, it, you, you have called out. Yes, make him the bait. You are correct. Yeah, because we did see that Stratus was receiving a lot of that focus coming out. Um, when he was on the summer, they dove onto him instead of going after Zenyatta, which they could have as easily killed. Mm -hmm. But instead, they went after Stratus, got rid of the DPS threat. So uh, they do need Poise to maybe feed a little bit to allow Stratus to actually open up. All righty. Well, let's get into game and see where they go. Good luck. Poor Poise. All right. Here we go, heading into Nimbani. Toronto Esports leading the way right now, 1-0 against NRG. And it's usually me leading the fire there. Tara said, but Gina said what I was trying to diplomatically put out there. But I mean, it's true, right? Where yeah. you have to do something to take advantage of the fact that Poise is getting isolated out if he's not able to make most of it. But for now, he's going to be sticking with the Tracer. I mean, we did get to see what the ping difference made uh, when he went for that Pulse Bomb stick onto Butcher. You, you saw that he could have eat away. He could have used the recall, but that little microsecond difference is what caused him to go down. Now it's just going to be a full all-out dive coming up from NRG while Toronto want to try and run that dive catch style. They have Nero on the Soldier 76, takes a peek, hits the Helix Rocket, but now they're jumping in. The NRG trying not to waste time here, trying to go for max reps, and they're going to be pretty close to getting a tick here if Toronto doesn't come back in. Toronto's buying time just enough, but if they don't engage quickly, they will lose that for a second. Meanwhile, Rob, under assault in the back. Axiom got to the back line. The dive from Toronto bought enough time to strike an NRG from the back, and now you see Toronto just 
easily moving their way forward, where Axiom has been leading good flank after good flank. It's been very smart. You saw him that entire time. He was lurking in this room while Guardian was just peeking over the corner, allowing Cruz to keep him topped off. NRG wasn't trying to focus Guardian down. They were never able to get the d -mech. And then from there, Axiom had the perfect choice just to be able to jump onto Robin. That's what you have to be careful for when you're running this kind of dive. Your Zenyatta is probably the most vulnerable, as we got to see in the Overwatch League the last week. Poise moving on forward. NRG committing to the point here once more. Toronto playing the outskirts. Pulse bomb out from Poise. Does it connect? No, not quite. Axiom, though, still going to fall. NRG turned back the other way, but now you got to deal with Nero. Nero's in the back, and this is where Soldier 76 can clean up. You have multiple people down with many areas for a 76 to just get good damage on targets from the outskirts. Energy goes in the sound barrier, and it's working out so far. Let's boys get the kill on the Dalton, but Toronto's still in the fight. Now here comes the tactical visor. Nero is trying to hunt down the squishier members, but he gets moved on out. Does Butcher by the D.Va out of that. Now the self-destruct does come out, but the Winston bubble is there to force them all back. The problem that NRG has right now is that they're very clearly throwing everyone onto the point, but they're not trying to take out any of Toronto on the outskirts, and so far they haven't done enough to get too much progress. They got one tick, but that's it. Yeah, we saw Poise playing a lot more passively. He was waiting out for that Axiom dive, which did come out onto Shu, and then, uh, excuse me, which did come out onto Rob Dab, and they were able to convert on that. Now here they come, full out dive, except Stratus doesn't go in even though he's got the blade. He's gonna be the one that's trying to tick up the point. And they got Guardian early. Guardian was not able to read back in the interim there, so there's no D.Va up for Toronto. They're down too early on. This is the best chance energy has had, and Poise gets Dalton. And it's worth noting, too, we did get update for production. This is on West Coast here, so Poise does have more of a chance of doing well because he's not playing on ridiculous ping. Yeah, and that last engagement, Butcher, though, was the one that made the huge difference. He goes into the back, he's got Smex's help, Poise is there, but Stratus didn't dive with them. Even though he had that blade, they relied upon Butcher with the Primal Rage. They get rid of Guardian, they're able to even get the Primal Rage kill onto, I believe it was uh, Cruz on the Ana. NRG, they have to take the advantage here while they can. They're moving into second. This is where teams build up momentum on the body. It's very difficult for the defense. Now they're going to dive straight on in. Stratus not wasting time for the Dragon Blade. Deep in with his Winston, and Stratus gets picked off. Nero stops his reign before he's able to do too much, but it's enough of a distraction. The dive in was still effective. You have three members of Toronto down, and they need to reset. That was a great dive. Usually when you're running this dive catch style with the Soldier 76, the Soldier 76 is so far back that if you do have the Mercy, the Mercy, if she's healing someone up on the front line, she could just Guardian Angel away, but Stratus notices that, you know, Cruz is way too far up. Even if he does Guardian Angel, Nero's right there. I know exactly who he's going to go to. I know that I can make this distance in two dashes. NRG looking for point B right now. Toronto does have an option. They don't have any support ults, but they do have Primal Rage backed up by the TAC Visor. Boys looking for the to pick up on Axiom. Isn't able to get it. Enough damage to make Axiom use Primal Rage immediately. Here comes Toronto. They're fully engaging. Toronto likely to use that as Axiom. Got robbed all the way back in spawn. Meanwhile, Nero comes in with the TAC Visor from the other side. Picks up Smex before he can re -mech. This is going to be enough for Toronto to buy time on second. And we see teams, when they do get pushed back on the offense here. It can be very difficult for them to actually come back and uh, finish this out. We saw a lot of teams actually get stalled out here on second point in Numbani. We'll see if NRG gets stifled. Now, they did use a lot of ultimates in that last fight. It's kind of a reset for them here. Now, the best thing they can do is try and force out that transcendence from Shu by just diving right onto him full force and then come in for a better fight next engagement. And that's going to be difficult because Shu has been one of the deadlier Zenyatta's in contenders here so far. If you go in on Shu, you might not live to tell the tale. NRG, they try and dive him, but Stratus didn't get the support he was looking for. Take it down immediately, but they force out the transcendence. Toronto just decides to counter engage with it. And yeah, they're going to clean up here, but I don't know if they needed to use that in the moment. Yeah, it looked like the transcendence wasn't necessary at all for sure, ZP. And now that is actually going to put them in a little bit of a hole because Stratus is coming up on another blade. He's at 81%. And so just a little bit of poke. He's got plenty of time to do it. This could be what they need to break open second and move on to third. And to your point, it sets up Stratus to be the hero where now you have that blade where, sure, there's going to be a Valkyrie in play, but that doesn't usually stop Genji's from doing serious damage in the moment. NRG fully loaded for this fight. A minute 15 left, a fight that they frankly must win. If they're not able to do this with ults here, it's very grim. Poise, pulse bomb out to the back line. Got Shu, a huge pickup to open this up. And you're gonna get the res up immediately. Cruz has used the Valkyrie. Stratus gets to hold on to the Dragon Blade all the while. And he's just gonna be able to dive on in here in just a moment. 
Yep, the Valkyrie is about to end, and so the re-engagement comes out from Toronto. They need to contest the point now. Smex gets D-Mech, but here it is. Stratus is in the back with the deflect, takes out Shu. Well, Shu took out himself as Stratus finds a second kill on Nero. And now it's all left to, for the cleanup for NRG, but Axiom has answered back finally. Axiom gets answered back, but the problem, of course, is that You've lost so many en or teammates here that you're not really able to delay for too much longer. Rob is going to deal with Guardian, and NRG just going to punch this on through. So NRG wins a fight that they absolutely had to win. Yeah, it looked a little bit dicey there for NRG because Poise had forced them back so far the support line along with Nero that I didn't think that Stratus would find his angle to be able to get all the way into the back. But they just waited it out. Poise got that kill. They forced out the uh, Valkyrie and the Res. And then from there, they had to come in for the uh, recontest. From there, that allowed Stratus to get in. Now, there we go. Sound Barrier out, and they're going to force the engagement. It saved Poise, too. Poise is in a rough spot. Now he gets to dive in deeper. Pulse Bomb not going to connect. In fact, he's a little bit too deep. Narrow the attack visor. Shifting position the other way. Gunning down NRG midstream. They weren't able to get enough off that barrier. They might have saved Poise, but they couldn't dive on Narrow in the back. And Narrow just comes in and punishes them for the attempt. So now NRG are left with one minute and 10 seconds, but they have a lot of tools coming online. Especially if they go for one last engagement here, they can keep poking with Stratus, get that EMP. What they need to do is crucially buy more time for Fozix to get that sound barrier. He should be able to, because right now there's a power deficit for Toronto, but they only have their support ultimates. You need, as you mentioned, you need to get the two fights here, right? Where you move in, get at least something out, and then you go for the next early hack on the Axiom, and they got him! NRG gets an early pick off, the Sombra working out here, and this gives him a big opportunity. Now the second part is Strass needs to give Rob before Transcendence. And that's a misplay coming out from Axiom. He knows that there's a Sombra on the field. He doesn't know where he is, and you're not running a full dive composition. You can't go in by yourself like that. Okay, as mentioned, Stratus is going to be looking for Shu in the back. See Shu over here. EMP out, gets him! No transcendence in play! It's exactly what Energy needed here in the moment. Now Energy gets to move on through. Cruz looking for the res. No, they deny the res in the moment. Cruz unable to get it, gives his life for nothing. Shu's going to have to transcend our spot, but the moment for that to be effective has been lost. Stratus keeping Energy in the fight. I feel like there might have been There's miscoordination you. coming out <laughs> from Toronto there, especially within the within the support line. If you're running the uh, Zen along with that Mercy, they're supposed to pocket each other when the engagement comes out. If that EMP comes online right on top of the Zen, the Mercy should be there to make sure that he stays alive. Pocketing him, it becomes so difficult unless you get that perfect spread out from Stratus, getting headshot after headshot. But he didn't. Shu could have survived there, and they could have extended this out, and they could have sent it to overtime. But look, NRG has five. 5.9 seconds. That's a good number here. Is it as good as having a little bit over a minute? No, but it means that no matter what Toronto does on their attack here, NRG gets another crack at this. And so far, they did look better here in Nambani. I thought it was a better showing from Poise. Was it at Damon levels? No. But it was certainly better than we saw from the first map. It does create a dialogue about this being very tough for NRG if Toronto can literally win off East servers if they hold serve but it still means that energy can make this a closer showing than perhaps might have been thought going in. Yeah, if it does just go back and forth, I mean, that is going to be, of course, this isn't in a best of five. That's three server picks for Toronto Esports, so it can be a huge difference now. Uh, NRG, living up to the name, uh, looks like I'm hoping that, I'm hoping they go with this. Fozix, please, don't let me down, buddy. Don't let me down. What do you have to lose? <laughs> I mean, actually. Except for a shot at live, live yeah, finals. Yeah. Uh, quite a bit, in fact, but, but. If you have the chance to use Torbjorn on the Bonnie, the historical lab, why not go for it? And for the looks, looks of it, NRG is going to be at the Torbjorn. They've run it before. It's not that big of a surprise. But because they've run it here before, on some level, Toronto should be prepared for this. They're also running the Junkrat along with Widowmaker, which is a defensive setup that we're seeing rise a little bit more in popularity right now. There's a lot of potency behind it but it can be very difficult. Maybe they're hoping that the turret is the thing that builds enough space for Poise to succeed on this Widowmaker. Poise will be in the back on the Widow. Of course, it will depend on him getting those early pickoffs. Toronto, meanwhile, I don't think they're gonna care too much. And look, the turret's down already. They have the moment of opportunity. It's a power spike 
for Toronto, where they don't have to worry about a level 2 turret. And they're just going to dive on in very casually, overpowering energy on the top. And are they going to get the D-Mech? Butcher's already out of the fight. Smex is almost e mech He has to run away. And even though they get the resurrection, look at all the control coming in from Toronto. That energy has not really contested here. But they got Axiom. He went a little bit deep. Energy's going to try turning this the other way. They've given up a tick so far. Dalton rolling on the outskirts. And now Guardian's down too. Energy can easily bring this one back. Yeah, that was just a great dive coming up from NRG. I mean, that's working with their composition to a T, right? You get dove upon, you just fall back, and you allow Toronto to just overextend. And this is even great because, well, this is what a Torbjorn composition wants. They want them to go ahead and exchange eliminations so that he can build up scrap, so they can throw out armor. Take a look, Rob has 75, Fosix has his own along with poise. You know what's scarier than a Torbjorn, though, and a Torbjorn having good positioning? Tank Torbjorn? I mean, yes, that would be horrifying, <laughs> but Nero has an early Dragon Blade. He built it up mid-fight. If they just can avoid this tire, avoid a casualty, which they do! Stratus doesn't even do any damage with that. Toronto with a golden opportunity. Dalton's already on the point, but Dalton's really the distraction. Here comes Nero over the top, looking for victims here, and mostly just got focused on the D.Va. The rest flew aside, but Cruz got caught in the melee. Energy works around the Dragon Blade. They can bring this back in the other way. It's going to force Toronto to transcend to keep themselves in this here, but Energy's coming back in. Self-destruct out from Specs, not going to be able to remack, was too far deep. And Energy, while they're fighting it back, it is an even fight here on both ends. They've given up another tick, but Toronto looking shaky. Toronto will be forced back. It looks like Pashu taking out that turret is going to alleviate some of the pressure. Now Poise gets taken out. Dalton is going to open it on up. The res out from Axiom is going to allow Toronto to keep a huge tank presence here on the point. And now they're finishing off the members. It's going to be Toronto to take point A with 4 minutes to 12, moving into second. There we got another blade. Can I can I just please point that out that towards the end of that fight, he built another blade after coming back in? What in the world? Not the worst showing though from NRG. They bought a decent amount of time on first. They can get another two minutes on second. They're in a position where they could hold. I mean, I feel like they had a better chance. Uh, it was it came down to just microseconds. The molten core did come out from Fozix, but it was right after his level two turret had gone down. So he sp he spent about like three four seconds trying to build up another turret, never able to get back up to level two, and then get that of course level three turret, which can make the world a difference in DPS. Well, Fozix, the heir of Torbjorn is over. Now he is on the Zenyatta. Energy gonna be looking to buy some time here. A big part could be Rob. Rob immediately using Valkyrie while under pressure here. Gonna be forcing Axiom back. Didn't want to stay committed as Winston there, but Nero wasn't able to get away. He's already down. He was committed within the fight. And Energy's gonna start bringing this the other way. They go, wait, you don't have Nero anymore. We're gonna run right at you. The problem is, is that they don't secure Nero's corpse, but it was enough. Smex caught Cruz up self-destruct, but while this is going on, it's Dalton in on the other side. This is the second time now this map where energy is doing well, and you see Dalton come out of nowhere to suddenly bring it back the other way. And they've got the spawn difference advantage here, so they will be able to retop off, especially cleaning up Stat Stratus at the end. And so NRG it doesn't look like they're going to want to try and contest this. Unless Fosix decides he's going to go out for it. No, uh, they're not going to. They're just going to set up for third. Yeah, this is not something you can easily come back on. As Fosix, you can throw a few orbs and be like, build me a transcendence. But you certainly don't want to float your way over to the point there. So with Stratus now with that EMP, last time we, well the last few times we saw him on Sombra, he is, you know, trying to target out the tanks, go after Axiom and Guardian. So on the front line, he will drop it as a dive comes out from NRG. They start Weird. pushing forward onto the payload here, but they kite away due to Toronto. They get the DMEC onto Guardian, but is that a worthy exchange? Look at everything they invested in there. And the, the answer to your question is not really. They really overextended on the EMP there. They're going in deeply again, but now they're setting up Nero. Nero on the revenge plate. They got both tanks though, and they're not gonna get Butcher just smacks Nero aside. So Toronto had a chance to make that work out in their favor. NRG though, they dove in. They still made it work, even despite the engage not being as ideal. Now Nero himself is actually swapping off onto the Sombra. So a bit difficult to really utilize the health packs, but he can still get some poke off. He has a lot of different angles that he can approach from, but it's Poise who zones him out and forces him to come out from the front. Toronto is designed that Sombra might be more their speed. Dalton in from the back, gonna wait out the Transcendence. Has a Pulse Bomb ready. 
Once it's down, looks for a little bit more permanent damage. Sticks the bomb in the back. Fozix is out of there. Smex no longer supported, not in a mech. Toronto moving back the other way. And Nero is making the Sombra work. Certainly in the moment, 50% of the way to an EMP. Yeah, he had it just swapped off. He might have been able to catch out Rob with that hack, but the Guardian Angel was too fast. They're trying to focus down Butcher, but he will be able to make it out alive. That's going to be some valuable healing. Here's the EMP up from NRG. NRG taking advantage. Cruz got caught trying the res, and even though he got the res off, he died in turn. That was a ghost signal from NRG, and they easily just go right back the other way, buying more time. Speaking of time, James, two minutes, 20 seconds left, but Toronto's gonna have an EMP of their own going to the next fight. And they're just mere meters away from finishing up this map. And so remember, uh, if they do complete it out, they're gonna get an additional, it looks like, a minute, or excuse me, 55 seconds added onto their clock, so they're going to be able to extend their lead out even further now. The dive does come out from NRG, the self-destruct is used, and it catches Axiom. Good enough. Axiom's been really aggressive, gets caught out by that, but you got to finish your plate. Axiom is brought back into the fight. Dalton on a rampage in the back line. The terror is not over here just yet. Dalton harassing the enemy Mercy. They're going to get the DMAC, and Toronto, with an EMP still loaded, is in a match-winning position. Oh no, an NRG, they're up against it. They have to jump out onto the point. That's why Nero's just lying in wait. He spots out. He knows there's a Zen on the right, and so he's gonna run into their spawn. We do have the Primal Rage being used by both tanks now, but it's gonna be Axiom trying to keep them in contained. Instant Valkyrie coming out and Transcendence. Energy learning support ults at the end because they have to. Oh no! no! Get on the payload! No! NRG not able to maintain that a little bit longer. My goodness. And that was the pressure that was being applied by Axiom, um, by their Sombra player. They were making sure that the Zenyatta had to stay contained within spawn, uh, whether by being batted back in uh, with the backhand of the Winston or with the threat of the Sombra EMP. So the end result of that pressure coming in from Toronto is that they have a sizable time advantage here. Two minutes and 16 seconds to a mere minute for NRG. What this means is that it is Nambani. This time difference does not mean much if you get the first point on the first or second attack because it's so hard to defend second. If NRG is able to just get point A, it's anyone's game. But it gives them less time to accomplish that. Yeah, I feel like when that does happen, that's where just anything at all can absolutely happen. I mean, we've seen crazy one-minute pushes to complete out uh, places like Junkertown or, or even King's Row. It happens more frequently than people would imagine. And so we'll see. NRG, they're going to have one, maybe two goes at this. They're going to go for that dive once again. Toronto with that counter dive style. Nero on that Soldier 76 again. We'll see if he can keep himself alive. Remember, you just want to kite back and catch them here. NRG just want any kind of progress on the point. Anything they can get. If they, even if they were able to just get a third, that would give them the option to still win off a first point defense a little bit more solidly rather than playing for the draw. So they need something. So now we have NRG. They're moving forward. They're going to start off with a dive. Now, this is interesting because Butcher is set up on the low ground here. They want to go in. High ground is taken here. And there's no one for Butcher, but they do force them all off. So Nero has to fight from the low ground. They almost got Dalton. Dalton was under serious pressure in the beginning. Had the rewind early. Now he can't be as aggressive in the fight. Smex under pressure in the back. Look at that coming in. The Lucio supporting. Meanwhile, Axiom gets caught out. NRG, the support play, sublime early in this fight. They're pushing Toronto back. But Butcher might have gone a step too far. Dalton finishes him off the other way, and suddenly it's NRG getting punished. They don't have a tick, oh, no. and it's only 12 seconds left. I'm not sure they can get back here in time. Stratus picks up two before he falls, so there's a window. Never mind. Nero just shuts it in the face of boys. Here comes the tactical visor as they hunt down Rob, and no one's going to be able to make it through the front, and NRG will not be able to take that tick. Oh my goodness, NRG just went a little bit too far deep there. You saw the play coming in between Fozix and Smex, where Smex drew a lot of fire, got into the back line. You see Fozix just swoop down, boop away attackers, turn on the healing, and it was actually looking quite good for NRG there for a little bit. But then what happens, they overestimate their advantage. You see Butcher go a little bit deeper. Suddenly you lose two people, and Nero comes out to play. The end result of all this is that NRG comes up with nothing. Toronto needs merely one tick on the point within two minutes and 15 seconds to be one map away from winning it. Because remember, this isn't a four-map set. This is playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely Axiom 
who was the crux of that defense. He went down, and once they knew that, they didn't have to overextend. They definitely did not have to overextend and sacrifice their own main tank on over. And RG now, they're not going to be running that Torbjorn or Risa style. They're going to be actually running a dive composition, and they're going to try and catch them off early here. Try to burn off maybe an extra 30 seconds off the clock of Toronto. We'll see if they get spotted out. All right, so if it's Route 66, you call this a train wreck strategy. What do you call it here in Nambani when you're near a bus? The Doomfist kills an OR-14 unit strat? I have no clue. I, 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 I have put you on the spot here, but that's basically what we're seeing, right? It's like yeah. old Route 66 strategy, so... And this is smart. It buys them time. You have to go with something out of the norm. Toronto just gonna move their way forward, and oh no, the way they're positioning actually makes it harder for the flank. Oh my goodness, Shu just That's got assassinated. Still works out in their favor. Both supports down. The NRG gambit has worked. Remember how we talked about maybe sometimes use poise as the bait? Well, they did actually in that one. He was <laughs> on the normal high ground position that a lot of the teams take um, right beyond this bus. And so he shows himself. That makes Toronto think, okay, we're absolutely fine from the back. But then we got to see the fruits of their labor, the fruits of their bait, while they just dove upon the support line, took them all out, but that does mean only 20 seconds gone because the fight went by so quickly. Still, it's time that energy needed to buy some ult charge. If they can now win this fight, they have a real path to victory. Toronto, for the way in once more. The tank staying on the point while well supporting the Guardian and Axiom. Looking quite good here so far. Specs is going to get team to Poise, though, in the back line. Does his work. Both supports for Toronto are gone. Who's going to heal them right now? The answer is no one. They must back out. And this is what we see on Numbani. The support line can have a, such a difficult time here, especially if you're running uh, the Zenyatta and Mercy. Uh, of course, the Lucio has that extra mobility where he can jump in with the rest of his tanks, leaving his Zenyatta vulnerable. But Shu and Cruz, when they get dove upon by a Genji, by a Winston, by a Tracer, even if you pocket each other, that is not enough heals to keep each other alive. Not quite, and this is going to be Toronto's last very, very good attempt. They're going to have to go through the Blade of Stress, but they'll have a Blade of their own. Very well could be a tale of two Genjis here. Toronto, going to take their cracks, and if they don't, they won't get a second attempt. Stratus opens up with a Blade of his own, directly looking for targets, getting booped around a little bit, but Nero fell early! Poise got him! And even though Poise is going to fall in turn, there won't be that Blade right now for Toronto, and Toronto does not have the punching power they need. But 20 seconds left, Nero can get back in. Nero can get back in, and he's the one with the blade this time around, but he's gonna have to cut through that barrier along with the Transcendence here. We'll see if they go with that damage boosted. Put all your eggs in one basket, the Nero basket. Dalton, though, he's on the lurk. And Dalton can be the distraction here. You look for Dalton, suddenly Nero's in your face. The two-pronged assault can be coming in. Toronto on the way. Dalton's one on the point. They have to go back and look at him, but Chu's already down. A successful dive from NRG. They double down with the Transcendence of their own. Whoa! Whoa! What a pulse bomb from Dalton! Picks on two! Now Toronto in the winning position. They just need a little bit more. That was fantastic from Dalton. NRG now burning everything they have in an effort to stay in this fight. Nero still actually holding on to the blade for cleanup, so you take a look. Here come the respawns from NRG, but here comes the blade from Nero. Not getting too much in the moment. Focusing on the takes, it's Poise! Just bops him in the back of the head. NRG respawns working their way back in, but is it gonna be enough? Here comes you with the Transcendence, and Toronto is hanging on. They just need a little bit more. They can't leave the point, though. Remember, it is an overtime. So now they're just focusing down the last members here as we have Rob falling. He had swapped off onto that Moira. He did not have the orb to heal himself. Now Poise falls. It's all down to, of course, the Soldier 76, Stratus, and Butcher. But as soon as they Goodbye. fall, <laughs> overtime. Well, it's going to be Toronto Esports just walking away. Barely with that second map victory. Well, as you see a Winston being his own jet aircraft to another part of the Overwatch world, what we see here is Toronto taking their second map, now being one map away from going to that live final. That's right, because this is a best three out of five for you guys following at home. It does change a little bit, kind of the, the orientation with things. But I want to talk about uh, why NRG lost so quick on that second, on the on the flip. Uh, you mentioned how they had overextended. They didn't have a very large window. They only had one minute to take that first point. Uh, and it was kind of pivotal. If they had just taken it, they could have stalled it second and then been able to push through a little bit easier. Yeah. What happened there? There was a critical error, right, on the defensive side for Toronto, where um, 
uh, Axiom pushes forward with that Winston. And the thing is, when you're running an Ana, you have to stay within line of sight for that healing. But the way that it worked out was that uh, Axiom was in front, Guardian was behind him, and of course the Ana was way far behind. So not only do you have not uh, no line of sight, you also have a Diva getting in the way of the heals. Um, it looks like there might have been a miscoordination error there. And so Axiom does go down. Now, even though Toronto made that critical mistake, there was another critical error on the opposite uh, opposite side coming out from NRG where Butcher decides to go in and he makes that same mistake and from there it just goes downhill for them. And I think the problem there is that Butcher didn't realize he needed to go that far in. It's sort of, you're in the moment where everyone's trying to make a play, but Smex was still very much alive. They had control on the point going their way. If they could have just backed out a little bit, reconsolidated, NRG could have gone that moving and who knows where this map would have gone, but unfortunately they end up losing Butcher and it just goes against them pretty heavily, but hey, they were close to the hold there. They made this closer than what we saw in Ilios for sure. Yeah, let's take a look at some re uh, replay footage here. This is Dalton, the very end of that map, and it happened exactly like you guys called it. Uh, they were going to be looking for one, and the other snuck up on the side and just kind of cleaned everybody up. Yeah, usually when you get that stuck notice, you just take your hands off both your mouse and your keyboard, and you just don't move anymore. But yeah, he jumps right into um, the Genji there and takes both of them out. But this is the kind of, uh, th these are the expectations we, were, um, we had for Dalton to come up with these huge plays, and he did for them. I just imagine Fozix going up to Stratus and be like, yo, you want to hear my new uh, sick mixtape? It actually just blows you up. It's, it's like, the bomb. no, no, no. It actually <laughs> just blows you up where it's one of those unfortunate things where there was no real way for Fozix to react to that. But yeah. he did bring that bomb right to Stratus. And well, you saw what happened after that. All right, guys, we are going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to see if Toronto can wrap this up with a 3-0 victory. Stay tuned.